Welcome back. We're here in Lightroom now. We're going to put in our finishing touches into this final PSD file that we just blended in Photoshop. And really you see that the only difference between these two images now, this is the original RAW, so let's take a look so we can see. There's the CR2 file, and this one is just now the sky. We just retained the sky, essentially. So you can see how there's probably only three or four, maybe actually two or three stops of additional light there. And at this point, you can probably tell now if we have a camera that can actually capture 14 stops of light, then a perfectly exposed image might actually capture the entire tonal range within the scene. And that's what we were talking about really earlier when we were talking about technology, is that technology, when we can have a camera that can capture a more dynamic range to begin with, then it makes our lives and processing much easier. Because if there's a way that we can capture all the tone within one single shot, then really we just need to tone map it using a single shot HDR, and we're going to get to that technique later on. We don't have to go through the whole kind of HDR processing technique. All right, so that's why cameras like the D800 that have a two-stop advantage over a 5D Mark III are kind of very nice to have right now. All right, let's hit I again. Let's remove all our information. Hit D to jump into our develop module. And this go around, we're going to actually select first HDR Max. So we're actually reprocessing the HDR with the other HDR effect. And you can see how psychedelic this gets. I mean, it gets absolutely bonkers, okay? So what I might do first is start with uh, HDR Lite, and it's still gonna be way too powerful, but it gives us a starting point. Now what we have to do as soon as we set the setting is the first thing I generally do is go and fix my detail. So I'm gonna zoom, or I'm gonna head down to sharpening, and we're gonna reduce sharpening just back down to zero, and noise reduction back down to zero as well, and set lens vignetting back to zero on the midpoint. If you wanted to, you can create versions of these presets that are for the re-import uh, portion, basically. And we might do that a little bit later on. Next thing I'm going to do is reduce my contrast, because that is absolutely bonkers as well. And then we're going to start to tweak our highlights a bit. So I'm going to pull down the highlights and the whites. And remember, the whole point of adding that sky back in was that so we had detail there. Okay, so we have detail there that we can actually modify by tweaking the image. All right, so from here, I'm just kind of tweaking, adding an additional clarity where necessary and we can actually go up to about 20 on this one and it'll look fine i'm going to darken just a little bit so we have a little bit more of a moody kind of tone to the image and it's starting to look really really nice now the main thing that i see here is i have a little bit of this kind of weirdness going on basically where this object because it's so close to the camera has a lot of contrast whereas these objects behind more don't so here's what we're going to do let's grab a graduated brush we're going to set this to contrast, and I'm going to reduce, and we're going to do a negative contrast brush, dragging up from the bottom of the image. And what we're really looking to do is just make it more natural of a transition between kind of those high contrast versus low contrast areas. All right, so right about there, about negative 50, negative 60, we can start to see that it starts to blend in just a little bit better. Now we can make overall contrast adjustments, and it's going to affect the image close to the same way as it would you know, from this midpoint right here all the way up to these foreground objects that are showing quite a bit more contrast. All right, so let's get a little more blacks, uh, shadows in there, just to make sure that we have a nice tonal range encompassed in this one single shot. Again, with clarity, a lot of people like to really over clarify their images. They go up to this point, they start to look crazy and kind of unnatural. But we can probably on this image go up to around 30 and really not have any downside to it. So let's go up to about 30, and then what I'm going to do with the sky is just do a nice little sky cloud ocean enhancer with a graduated filter. We're going to pull this down over the sky, and then I'm going to make it just a little bit more subtle. Okay, so we're just going to pull down the effect a little bit, and then bring down the contrast, bring down the highlights, bring down clarity a bit. Just make it all overall just less punchy. We don't need too much of an effect for this because it already has a really nice sky to begin with. So I'm going to leave it about right there. This is looking pretty dang solid at this point. All right. Now let's take a glance at our photo and see what we've got. Make sure I don't have any fringing going on. Make sure kind of the sky and everything looks good. And this is all looking pretty solid. What I'm going to do now is just add in that subtle lens vignette just to slightly darken the edges, just at negative 10. You can see how light it is. And this is looking pretty dang solid from here. So let's check out. Here was that before blended version of the image, straight from Photoshop. We can see it's quite flat. 
and here is the after. Let's take a look, make sure we like it when we compare this to our original image. So let's compare the two and just see if there's anything that we think is too far beyond. And what I think is overall a little bit, I think this might have a little bit too much saturation over here and I might just pull it out a tiny bit. Everything else is looking pretty dang solid compared to that original. We can see the rest of the sky there. So let's just go back here, make a couple minor tweaks. And the first tweak I'm gonna do is just a contrast. We're gonna pull it down a little bit. I'll do a little bit of subtraction with vibrance. And uh, one thing I actually didn't do is, is double check my uh, temperature with the raw file. I think the temperature was actually okay with that raw file. It looked okay. Let's go back here. Yeah, this looks pretty solid, but if we wanted to go with certain types of toning, we could make adjustments there. And really, once you get back into the PSD version, I'm typically making temperature and tint adjustments by ones and twos. Generally, if you click up, it's gonna go by five and that's gonna to be too much. So what I might wanna do is just add two to the temperature just for a little bit more warmth, maybe even three, just to give me a little bit more yellows and stuff in that rock and kind of create a little more warmth there. And then with the sky, what I might do is just make it a little bit more subtle. So pull it out just a little bit, reduce contrast, making it a super subtle effect on this enhancement basically, all right? So this is looking pretty dang solid right there. Once again, at this point, if we want a black and white, I would just hit command apostrophe to make a virtual copy or control apostrophe on PC. Hit V to switch this over to black and white. And once again, once with it, we're in black and white, we're always adding a little bit of exposure, adding a little bit of contrast to our image, adjusting in our blacks because we can always handle a little more blacks and add in that extra punch. And I'm gonna bring up exposure just a bit more. And generally, we can also increase the strength of these burns when we're doing black and whites because you want it to have a, kind of a more dramatic look to it. All right, so this is looking pretty dang solid at this point. And uh, check out that histogram. We have all that tonal range. We have some nice highlights. We have some nice shadows and everything in between. And let's take a look at our final HDR image right here. All right, if you guys like the temperature down at zero, that's totally fine too. This is really where it comes down to your preference. And I might just leave it there because it looks a little more natural. So here's the before where our, it shows our blended PSD file. Here's the after. You can see we've done a really nice job. Here's that original raw file. You're gonna see how much extra detail we've retained, particularly in the sky area. All right, so great job, everybody. Let's go on to the next set of examples.